members of the panel support the cutting of overseas aid to help reduce the national debt after the next election? OK, members of the panel, would you reduce the uh, cutting... Would you, uh, would you support the cutting of overseas aid? Uh, OK, Patrick O'Flynn, you go for it. Well, look, this is one of the areas where UKIP's offered new choices to the British public. When I was a political journalist, I used to sit in the press gallery of the House of Commons and they would all congratulate each other for the cross-party uh, support for this arbitrary 0.7% of GDP uh, going on foreign aid. And, and they would elevate that because what they were really saying was if we all, the whole monopoly goes with this one position, then the fact that polls show most of the public don't agree with it, uh, we'll have no traction, we'll be able to do it anyway. Uh, we say uh, it's ridiculous at a time like this to just be stuck on that arbitrary target. We believe much aid is wasted, that long-term bilateral programmes with corrupt foreign regimes uh, result in money going where it shouldn't. We believe in prioritising emergency relief, uh, inoculations against infectious diseases. Would certainly. you be spending money on Ebola now? Oh, Would you certainly. Be well, that? Ebola is scale? exactly what foreign aid is for. There's no doubt oh, about right. that. Uh, what it's not for is the very long-term huge bilateral programmes which actually uh, undermine the incentives for countries to, to go for trade and economic development and responsible government, and uh, money drains right. away. Ebola is absolutely what foreign aid should be for, and the contingency reserves as well, better spent on our troops going to Sierra Leone, where I'm sure they'll do a brilliant job, then on fighting dodgy foreign wars with no particular uh, end game at the behest of the United States. Well, the ISIS. Well, ISIS, if you want me to talk about that. No, I'm just uh, checking out what you were referring to. Well, I, dodgy, I, dodgy I just, foreign wars. Yeah, well, if I just make a very quick point on that. A year ago, David Cameron wanted to bomb the Syrian regime and arm the rebels. And now, a year later, he, he, he wants to bomb the rebels. Well, okay. if we'd gone with plan A, we'd have probably have ISIS in charge in Damascus already. Harriet Hum. Rubbish. No. Not Harry rubbish, Hamm. my opinion, sir. sir. Um, no, I don't think that we should um, cut international development support uh, for the national debt. I really don't. <laughs> I think it's a very, very small percentage. It's less than 1% um, of our public spending. No, and of, if there of, are people... Of GDP, not of GDP of public Yes, of GDP, even less. And, and basically, if there are people starving in the world because they're in very poor countries, I think the idea that we should then turn are back on them and say, sorry, we're not going to give you anything and you can die of starvation because although we're, relatively speaking, a wealthy country, we've got to look after ourselves. I think we're more altruistic um, and more internationalist and more humane in this country. But, but secondly, I think it's also good in terms of helping other countries get on their feet and develop and then they can have good relations and trade with us. And if you think of a country that's developed where we've got good relations but we no longer give aid to, but we used to, like India, yeah. they are massively important trading partners for us. So I think that we should carry on uh, with our international uh, development budget. And also, UKIPS, I thought it was your proposal that we should actually abolish the Department of International Development. And if ever there was an example of why we need it, look at the Ebola situation in Sierra Leone. We need that help with their health services. We need that out of humanity because of the awful effect of the disease on them, but also because this is a global issue. And I don't think we should be a mean, narrow-minded, inward-looking country that only looks out for ourselves, I think that is depressing and I don't hold right. that. Right. <laughs> Nigel Stephen, who asked the question, what's your view? Well, I'm inclined to uh, go with what Harriet Harm has just said, because the idea that none of this aid is tied and it's just given and we don't get anything back in return just is not true. And actually, if you were to trim down uh, that 0.7% that Patrick has mentioned and uh, look at the sort of reciprocity of it, what we get back, and then you actually look at in proportion to what the national debt is, we're looking at a tiny, tiny fraction uh, in terms of reducing it. So that's why I go along Does with anybody website. here support what uh, Patrick Griffin said about it? That, that... Yes, you, sir. Um, I'd like to know, Harriet Harman, where Brazil were a much more developed economy than Britain now, and we're still actually giving them money. And you mentioned China. Overseas aid still goes to China. So I'm all for protecting overseas aid for countries of need, 
but with countries of greater economic output than Britain, why should it go to them? Uh, Eric Pickles. Would you like to answer that? Yeah, but I, I want to just say something I said. No, could you ask, answer him first? Because that's the way the programme works. No, I'm going to... My experience of the programme is we say what we like and you just try and stop us. I just want to say, I agree with what, uh, what Harriet said. I think it's absolutely right. You know, it would be entirely wrong. Now, of course, there are some places that we're given that are prosperous. We used to give a lot of money to, to India, but we've gradually moved out to a position where, where we didn't. We were still India giving India have it. to tell us to stop giving it because they didn't. Didn't want it. Well, we we ran down a, we ran down a series of programs, but you can't get away from the fact, Patrick. If we haven't got uh, if we haven't got this program, there is no way in the relatively short time we could have pushed up the uh, the, the aid to Sierra Leone. It would have been impossible to start from from nothing. And there are people, there are girls getting an education in, in parts of, um, of of the of the Far East and in Asia that wouldn't have got an education without British aid. Right. And it's in our interest to do so. We are a small nation. Nation, but we are a big trading nation and it is in our interest to ensure that there is literacy, that there is clean water and that people get a good education. Now can you put your question Mr. again? Mr Pickles, is um, overseas aid to fund um, space programmes? No. No, 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 clearly it is, it is not been used to, f to fund well, a space why programme. Why have you got a space it's programme? A, it's kind of a very interesting idea but I don't think we'll be using it for that. Well, clearly I've Mark, been. Malcolm Bruce. Well, I've had the privilege of chairing the International Development Select Committee of the House of Commons for the last nine years, and I have been all over Africa um, and Asia looking at UK's aid programmes. Um, and I absolutely do believe they both serve the, the global interest and actually Britain's national interest. But we don't do it in order to get a return on investment. We do it to lift people out of poverty because we actually care about it. But we want to do it in a way that's sustainable. I was a few months ago in Sierra Leone and Liberia at the beginning of the Ebola outbreak. And the UK and indeed the United States have been working there to build up their health capacity. But we hadn't got far enough down the road for them to be able to withstand the particular threat they have now. What I hope we will do is put more resources in to tackle the problem, but also leave a legacy where they can cope with su such a problem yeah, in the future. That's a sound investment for them and for us. And you think we've tried to eliminate AIDS, malaria. These are all diseases that threaten the whole planet, not just these people over there that apparently we don't care about. These people over there are our All brothers right. and sisters who we should care about, we do care about, and we have a capacity to help them help themselves, lift them out of poverty, and create a world which is much more unified, okay. less prone to violence, less prone to migration. It's a very good investment. We should be proud of the fact that we are the second largest donor in the world. And I hope when Michael Moore's bill passed through Parliament, we will enshrine in law that 0.7% will be our commitment okay. for the future. Thank precisely you. Precisely so that you Thank can Thank you very much, Malcolm Bruce. And <laughs> Jeanette Woodson, very briefly, if you would. I think... I think we are all. I think we're all on the same side here. I mean, right, possibly well, not UK, mean, no. not UK. But you know, what kind of a country do we want to be? We're a wealthy country. You know, we're a big player in the world. We can afford it. It's morally right. Of course, we've got to keep the aid going. All right. 